Well, why don't I, we're a couple minutes late, so why don't I go get started? So welcome everyone to the Historic Districts Commission. Thank you. This is the August 19th, 2021 Town of Concord HDC meeting. And we're calling the meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. according to my clock. Uh, we have three uh, continued public hearings this evening and three new applications to review. And we'll have, we have some additional business at the end of the meeting. And before we get too much further, let me do a quick roll call of the commission. If you would just say aye when I call on you. Luis? Aye. Abigail. Aye. Mia? Aye. Kate. Kate's an aye. Aye. Den Dennis? Aye. And Melinda. Aye. Welcome to all of you. If you if, if I didn't say hello already. All right. So we're conducting the meeting online in accordance with the Commonwealth of Mass executive order uh, suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. The public may access this meeting through both telephone and video conferencing. Pardon me. Uh, members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment <clears throat> on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand in the participant function in Zoom uh, if you're calling in, use star nine and or just wave your hand or we'll, we'll, we'll see you if you want, want to speak. Uh, the host will mute microphones of folks not speaking. And I'm going to, because we have a lot of people tonight, I'm going to ask folks who are attending to please, when you're not speaking, uh, to please mute yourself and turn your camera off uh, because we've got a lot of bandwidth and it could get very uh, confusing. Uh, we have bandwidth issues. Uh, the commissioners will always be on and the host and the current petitioner will all, always be on camera. Um, I will call on each commissioner for comments on an application following the presentation uh, by the petitioner and then we'll open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I'll ask for a motion from the commission to continue approve, approve with conditions or disapprove. A second and a, we'll do a roll call vote and once we've acted on an application, the petitioner is free to go. So with that, thank you for listening to my speech. Uh, we will go right to the agenda. And I think the first continuance has been uh, delayed, Heather, I have 51 Walden Street. Yes, yeah, so they've requested continuance to September 2nd. All right, so would someone please make a motion along those lines. I move that we um, continue the application for 51 Walden Street uh, to our next meeting on September 2nd. Second. All right, thank you. I'll just go around the horn and tell me how you're voting with an aye or a nay. Luis? Aye. Abigail? Aye. Mia? Aye. Kate? Aye. Dennis. And Melinda. Dennis is a silent aye. aye. And by the way, voting members this evening, at least at the start beside me, will be Luis, Nia, Melinda, and Abby. How's that? And then we have a couple of recusal issues, so we'll switch around a little bit. All right. Thank you. That's number one. So the next. Uh, Applicant, uh, Julia Minor, 399 Lowell Road. This is in the Barrett Farm District. And this is a certificate to construct, construct a small addition with windows to add some corner windows, relocate electrical services and bury some electrical lines. And uh, Julia, thank you again for, do I see you, are you here? I can't see Julia, but that doesn't mean she's not here. Peter, I'm gonna recuse myself. Okay, hang on. I just want to make sure the applicants here, but thank you. So Nia's recusing and I'm going to elevate um, Kate. Is that all right, Kate? Or do you have to, you don't have to go yet? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I don't see the applicant, Heather. I don't see her. So maybe we'll come back to this application. Okay. We did have a site visit this morning. It was very wet site visit and Dennis and I were there. So um, all right, um, why don't we pause for, that? If I may add, uh, for the record, I visited this afternoon on my own uh, that side visit because I missed the one this morning. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, all right, why don't we, uh, I guess, just pause there for a minute and come back if, um, if Ms. Minor uh, arrives. Uh, do we have to make a motion, Heather? No, we're just sort of pausing. Yeah, we can just pause and come back to it. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next, 421 Main Street. This is uh, a certificate of appropriateness to install some venting, expand a rear porch and replace some windows. <clears throat> uh, Scott Leisure, Leisure I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, is the um, applicant. The, we, we had a visit with Scott and the owner this morning at the site at 8.30. Thank you both. Hello, Addie. Hi. Welcome, Here, I'm welcome gonna, back. As a, a butter, I'm going to recuse myself and I'll mute and turn off my video for the duration of the application. Oh, okay, thank you. And Nia, I'll, why don't I bring you back up? Yes? All right, so it's uh, Luis, Nia, Kate, me, and Linda. All right, so uh, we had a nice site visit this morning. I think it's a fairly clear scope of work. Um, Heather, is it, uh, I'm not even sure we need to put the pictures up, frankly. It was a very straightforward discussion. Dennis, uh, you and Abby and I were there. Did you have any, just to ask, put a point at you, did you have any particular thoughts, Dennis, from this morning? But you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. You gotta unmute yourself. Um, the, it was pretty straightforward, as you said, Peter, um, they wanted to replace some windows and, um, I think all things considered, that's a fine with me, um, using a hang up, but in this case, it, it seemed to be fine to replace those windows. And they made a case for one that was rotted on the upper level and, um, which definitely needed to be replaced. Um, once we saw where the fence was going to go, the proposed fence is going to go, it seemed to solve all the other problems, which was screening of some vents um, that uh, are coming out of, uh, of the building. I think on top of that, they plan to put some, some plantings in there. Um, they're going to modify the fence to be lower. They wanted something higher, but I think they're going to uh, provide a lower fence, which is what we like in front of the, of the building, which will still cover, I believe, uh, any of the problems that, uh, that we were concerned about. And the rest of the application, which deals with, I think, a new deck or porch in the back, is around the back, and uh, you can't see it. So it's no longer in our purview. OK, thank you. Addie, may I? Uh, I'm going to address the homeowner for a minute. I think we talked about a fence. Did you happen to uh, have any pictures? I, or I did a little driving around, but it was just so rainy. <clears throat> All of my attempts at taking photos of fences I liked failed. Um, but from driving around, I, you know, I think what I'm looking towards is like a white picket style and, you know, 36 to probably 48 high, um, but haven't gotten much further on finalizing that there when the weather is better. Hopefully tomorrow I have to be over there. I was going to drive around, take some photos of them and then talk over with Scott. But that's my thought is would white painted pickets, um, whatever height kind of works. And then it'll have a, a gate in it that's like a little larger than car width um, so that we can pull a car and back if we need some extra parking because there isn't really any parking there on Main Street, street parking. Okay, Heather, you got your hand up. Did you? Yeah, so just a, a point of order. The original application didn't include anything about a new fence. Um, so nothing was noted in the legal ad. So a new fence with a gate would require a new application. It can't be amended to this one? No, because it wasn't in the legal ad. So technically we can't allow that. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, would you mind putting the, the uh, image up uh, then, Heather, just so we can kind of see what we're talking about? So uh, my sense is what, uh, I mean, we know the homeowner's intent. So the question is, and, and I, I don't know how many folks were here the last time from the commission, but uh, you can see, let's see here with this, uh, let's see, uh, Main Street is at the top of the drawing and it's the unit on the left here. So- uh, And there was an see. old fence towards the, yep, right where your mouse mm -hmm. is. And there'll be a new fence. It'll actually be further forward because there's a second set of vents um, that I don't have in this drawing that are further forward on the driveway. Yeah, so it would be about where your 
mouse is now is where the fence. So I think I think the the trick with this Addy is that so it, it looks like technically it requires an application for the fence. Right. Um, the, as Dennis said, the porch is sort of outside our we you can't right. really see it, so so it's okay to do what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the vents and the screening of those vents that would be the issue. So um, I think we're we're essentially we'd be approving it with a condition that the fence actually is installed. Now you mentioned a picket fence as opposed to a I think the one next door is a board fence. A board fence. And I could do I could do a board. I wasn't sure what the well I think that from in, the street the board looked like more intrusive or visible from the street, but then maybe it provides kind of less blockage of what's going on. I think on that's it. that's what I was going to say. I think it, yeah. it provides a little more of a barrier, but it also yeah. does essentially screen everything we were talking right. about. So I, I'm really fine with a board okay. fence. And then we would be concerned about the height. You know, we don't want to go, right. and you said 36, 48 inches. So I think we'll, so, so I'm just, I know we're the, the, I yeah. haven't even asked the commission for comments yet, but where we're going here is we saw the, the, the site issues. We really didn't take exception to anything However, we were thinking the fence would go up. Um, I think that it's obviously the homeowner's intent to do that. Um, so I think, I think, and Heather, correct me if I'm wrong, we could, we could conditionally approve this and say, we're approving it, assuming, or on the condition that. No. Yeah, you could, you could place a condition that the applicant is required to submit an application for a fence that will screen the vents. Okay. Does that make sense, Addy? Process. Yep, that wise? makes okay. sense. And All I right, can so, get that together and submit it in terrific. the next All week. right. So why don't I just uh, then go around the horn and see if anybody on the commission has any uh, thoughts or feelings about the, the project. Luis? I have no comments. I visited the site uh, this afternoon as well, and I agree with uh, what Danny said before. Thank you, sir. Nia? Um, I also visited very early this morning um, before you all got there. Um, Ooh, and sure. my, uh, my main concern was the fence and just my two cents, I guess, generally towards the front, um, I would lobby for picket and not to exceed 42 inches, but that's just yeah. my, my two cents. Okay, thank you, Mia. Kate. Uh, I went by later on this afternoon and I wasn't entirely sure about the fence situation, but I understand it better now. Um, I don't have any real objections. Thank you, Dennis. Any other thoughts? The only other thing I should mention, because I think it's in the application, at least it was discussed at the last meeting, and that is the vents on the side. Mm -hmm. And we saw those this morning. They're quite small and they can be painted out, and I don't think they're a problem. Other than, okay. I, other than that, I have no problems at all with this. It looks fine. Okay, thank you, sir. And Melinda, last but not least. So I was not, I'm not in town right now. So I was unable to go to the site visit this morning. So I cannot comment, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, I think we've got a pretty clear picture from the commission side. So why don't I open this up? Is there any public comment uh, on the proposed work at 421 Main Street? Looking around the room. Any hands, Heather? I don't see any. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, why don't we bring it back and I'll look for a motion from the commission, please. And I'll, um, oh, I was gonna say, I'll make a comment. I'm willing to submit like the application for the fence to be 42 high, if that's. Okay, um, I would go ahead and do it. We'll okay. we'll review it. And then decide the height. quickly. Okay. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. I think it should come back to us just because it's just complicated enough. It wouldn't yeah. be. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead, Nia. I, I move that we approve the application for, for 421 Main Street uh, with the condition that the applicant uh, submits a, a further application to install fencing uh, to screen uh, the vents. A second. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you both. I will go around and take your vote, Luis. Aye. Nia. Aye. Kate. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And Melinda. Aye. 
and I'm an I as well. All right, so Addy, you're approved. And uh, if you would just go ahead and submit on the fence, that would be terrific. Great, thank you so much. All right, good luck getting that good work luck. done. Yeah. All right, and I, I, see, uh, I see Julia has joined us. Julia Minor, are you there? Yes, I am. There Hi. you are. All right, why don't we, uh, we skipped over you, but now we're gonna skip back. Oh, I'm so sorry I wasn't here. I, I anyway, That's okay. I'm here now. <laughs> there you are. Sorry. All right, so um, would you mind, Heather, putting up the picture? Uh, we had a site visit, as I mentioned, a couple, uh, Julia, a couple of other commissioners did stop by just uh, during the day. Okay. Um, Dennis and I had no particular comments. Uh, I think it, it's, a, it's a handsome little addition. Uh, so why don't I go around and see if folks have any particular comments. Uh, Luis? I have no comments, really. We have seen this house before many times. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It didn't happen. <laughs> it looks better every time. Uh, That's Abby. right. That's right. <laughs> Abigail. Um, I have no objection to the proposed changes. I think it's um, uh, appropriate and keeping within our guidelines. Um, and as we said, we're familiar with the property. This has been an ongoing project, and these are in keeping with the scale and scope of other work that we do. Okay, and I forgot to say, Mia has recused herself and Abby unrecused herself. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kate. What Abby said. What Abby said. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> Good thing. Them, Sensible them, things. It makes the minutes easier. Dennis. No problem at all. It seems very straightforward and it's going to be very attractive. All right, thank you, sir. And Melinda. I think it's all fine. Thank you. All right, uh, I think we're pretty set here. So why don't I open it up? Is there any public comment on the proposed work at 399 Lowell Road in the Barrett Farm Historic District? I'm gonna look around, see if there are hands. Mia has her hand raised. N Nia, do you, did you do that on purpose, Nia? Uh, yes. Aha, go ahead. Um, I just had one request. I was obviously I had to recuse myself from the site visit this morning, and it may mm -hmm. have been discussed then. Um, hi, Julie. Hi. Uh, I think the project's going to be fantastic. I just had one request. I think at the last meeting you mentioned an electrical panel up at the street that was going to be um, yes installed, yeah. and I just wondered if I could request, as that's directly across the street from us, if we could request some sort of evergreen. Uh, screening, please. Sure. To it's be considered. To, oh, yeah. It's going to be behind a big tree. It's a double tree. Um, so that will help screen it from your view. But um, I, we, we're, you know, trying to add bushes. We have to mitigate for some things we're taking out in the back. We'll be adding mountain laurel and. and right. Okay. I just want, so, I don't want to drag this on. I just okay. want to check. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for your comment. Thank you, Nia. All right, I think that is about it for public comment. So why don't we come on back to the commission for a motion, please? I move that we accept the application for, what's the number I'm forgetting? 399 Lowell Road. 399 Lowell Road has submitted. Second. And a second. All right, let's go around the horn. Luis. Aye. Abigail. Aye. Kate. Aye. Dennis. Aye. And Melinda. Aye. All right, Julia, you are good to go. Well, thanks Thank so much, you everyone. Again. Okay. Have All a right. good night. Thank you. Good luck with that lawn. All right, folks. Thank you. And Nia, welcome back. And I think we're all back uh, in full, full member presence here. All right, that was our last uh, continuance. So we got through those nice and quickly. Um, on to new public hearing. So our first new uh, public hearing applicant is 8 River Street. Uh, the applicant is, is uh, listed as F Collin and P's. This is a certificate of appropriateness to replace front steps and chimneys. 
And uh, is the applicant here? You see the applicant? Yes, I am here. Oh, there you are. Sorry, we're on page two of the Zoom room. Well, <laughs> I'm relying. My son, fortunately, is here. We're, <clears throat> we're <laughs> oh, there that we is, are. That is okay. All right. Colin, do you have a camera you can turn on or no? Can we turn it's okay camera? if you it's okay if you don't. Not no pressure. Hang on. Oh, there you are. Okay. You can you see me? Yes. Yeah. Hi folks. Sorry, we're actually at a birthday party on Martha's Vineyard. Oh man. <laughs> that sounds like way more fun than we're having. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Actually, let's. I've got two sons here can understand computers better than I do. Wow, they're that's a lot of tech support. It's more than most of us <laughs> get. All right. Well, I welcome so. and uh, we just you. walk us through the application real quick, Colin. If we could ask that. Um, the steps, as you can see, are badly deteriorated. They're brick. They're a very porous brick, and they there's just no hope of of just you know putting new bricks in. Um, I have had. Um, Dave Berkowitz, who's a good mason, over, um, and he recommended that we not put brick back in, but that we put granite steps in, because uh, once you do that, we're done, and it's never going to have to be done again, and I think they are compatible with the neighborhood and with the historic district, um, and so that's what the application is, is to remove the existing steps and replace the top, the first four steps with granite steps. The chimney. Okay, Heather, could you could you go through these pictures? There we go. Thank you. Had sorry, Colin, I interrupted you. The, yeah, the chimneys. Um, we aren't changing anything. It's just the chimneys are seriously deteriorated. When we bought the house twenty years ago, I had the chimneys pointed up, but the mortar is just coming out of them, and uh, they're going to come down at some point. And he looked at them and he thought they were bowing, and decided that the best approach was to take the chimneys right down to the roof line and rebuild them with, again, red brick, um, in the, the same material you have there, but not with a porous brick, but with a, you know, more modern brick, same coloring. Uh, so we're not gonna change anything. We're not changing the material in the chimneys. Same, same detailing, Colin, same sort of cap detail and what have you. Um, I, I think a cap would be, to, be a good idea if that would be okay with you. Uh, well, yeah, that's what we typically see. I'm just, I actually, I was thinking, sorry, more the, just the, like the way the brick is detailed, it, you know, bumps out at the top. Is it a sort of a replacement of the chimney as is basically? Yes. Okay. And if you are going to add uh, metal caps, we would just want to see that, you know, the, the cut sheet of the cap itself. Yeah. Um, I, it's not in the application. I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable without the cap right now. And if you want, I'm happy to come back later with it or if, I'll talk to the Mason about it, but uh, the chimneys work fine as they are. Okay. Well, we're happy to approve it without, it's just that we typically yep. see a, a cap on it. On yeah, a I, I know most of the houses on Main Street around us and River Street all have caps on their chimneys. I just hadn't thought about it much. And Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna defer to Abigail, who's our chimney uh, expert. Yeah, they uh, were. Whether... <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Abby, what do you think? Should we recommend a cap or are we like so outside our Dave boundaries? Dave Berkowitz rebuilt our chimneys as well. We're at 398 Main Street, so we're just around the corner from you. Um, and for our operational chimney, uh, he did recommend a cap. Our cap actually sits um, low. It's um, it's a kind of an operational one, so you don't see it from the street. But I would I would guess that he's going to recommend something. Okay. Um, but I think it's a... It, I view these chimneys and the repair work being done as kind of a replacement in kind. I would say that we could approve on a conditional basis, the addition of a cap with the provision that it, the cut sheet be submitted and that it be, you know, in kind in keeping with um, other previously approved caps and Heather pa could paint pull, black. Yeah, right. pull one of those for you. Um, and as for the steps, I have I have no objection. I think obviously they're in a deteriorated condition and the change of material is still appropriate and in keeping with the guidelines. Yeah. You see with the okay. freeze thaw, it's just they're they're on the way out. Okay. 
All right, Colin, I think we've got the picture. So let me go around and see if the commissioners have any other comments. Uh, Nia, any thoughts? Um, just a question. Um, it, is there currently a railing? Yes, there, I'm sorry you can't see it, but there is a railing on, as you look at the picture there on the right-hand side, going up the right side of the steps. It's a, um, essentially a black pipe railing. And, and will that be retained? That will be retained, yes. Okay, thank you. Because I was concerned that there wasn't a railing. Okay. No, yeah, the, there is a railing and it's not actually connected to the existing steps. It's freestanding and so it will stay there. Okay, the, the next question I had is, uh, it's great to do the granite steps for the bottom four steps, but you're still gonna have, unless I've misunderstood this, um, where the top landing is, you're still gonna have brick risers to the first yes. first step of granite is that correct that's correct the brick the brick that's there is in good shape with the exception of one brick one or two bricks under the column on the left side and he will replace that that those two bricks that are cracked okay so you're just going to slip in the granite steps right to line up with those um that first set of brick risers exactly so the, right. exactly. okay yeah, I have no, uh, no objection. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nia. Uh, Abby, any other thoughts or are you, are you cool? No, I'm, okay. I'm, I've said my piece. Okay. Thank you, Luis. I have no comments. All right. Thank you, sir. Kate. Am I there? Okay. There oh, no. Go. Yep. Oh, now you're not there. Now you're <laughs> muted. How about this? There, there you are. Sorry, uh, no real comments. David Berquist rebuilt my chimneys and I have the same sort of thing as Abby described. The cap is slightly recessed inside the profile of the top of the chimney. And the granite steps, um, actually, I suspect this is a late, like 20th century Greek revival house, but granite steps would have been on a 19th century Greek revival house. So uh, I think that is a good choice. Great, thank you. Thank you, Kate. Dennis? Uh, I'm fine, I see no problems. And Melinda, thank you, Dennis. Uh, same here, I think it's just fine. Okay. All right, I think we've heard from all the commissioners, so why don't I open it up? Is there any public comment on the proposed work at H River Street to replace front steps and chimneys? Or I should say rebuild. Uh, see any hands raised. So I bring it back to the commission. Uh, David, the only comment actually I was going to make is to make sure the granite is kind of non-slip. I think, you know, the, whoever's going to install it will know to, you know, rough the surface up just a little bit because that granite can get a little, when it gets wet, you know, it, can get a little it will be. Okay. All right. I'd look for a motion from the commission, please. I move that we approve the application for 8 River Street to replace front steps and chimneys uh, as submitted and also to install a chimney cap if desired uh, with uh, provided it is submitted to Heather for administrative review prior to installation. Does that make sense, Colin? That sounds fine. Okay. Can I get a second on that? Second. Luis. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm just going to go around and the order has changed a little bit. So let's see how you vote. Kate. Uh, aye. Dennis. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Nia. Aye. Abigail. Aye. Luis. Aye. And I'm an aye as well. All right, Colin, you're all set. Wish the person there happy birthday from us and uh, good luck getting the work done. Thank you all of you. I appreciate your help. All right. You're welcome. Thanks for attending. <laughs> Thanks for attending from afar. All right. We are moving right along. So our next applicant, 19 Sudbury Road, I just want to preface the next two applicants, uh, we are going to require site visits. So we'll have a, you know, we'll have a discussion about the project, a presentation discussion, but, but we won't go too far into the weeds yet because we need to go out and look at the, at the projects on site. So this is uh, 19 Sudbury Road. 
applicants are Rosa Hallowell and Mark Stein. And this is a application to demolish a single story addition, construct a single story conservatory addition with a hipped skylight, demolish and reconstruct the existing garage with a second story addition, replace a flat roof and wood balustrade with a pitched roof, reconstruct an entry landings and porches, replace and add new exterior doors, replace roofing, install solar panels, rearrange, remove, and add new windows, install exterior lighting, construct new walkways, replace fencing, and paint house. And I'm willing to bet the kitchen sink is somewhere in there. So the whole shoot and match. All right, um, Rosa, I see you're here. Uh, would you mind, and uh, I'm not sure who else is on the applicant team. Let's see, is, are you presenting, Rosa? I'll be presenting with uh, both our architect, Vivian Lowe, and landscape architect, David Fisher. Hello, Vivian. Hello, David. Um, all right. Well, Heather, would you mind putting the, hmm, I think this is a pretty straightforward set of drawings, correct? I, I believe the, the applicant is going to screen share. They've uh -huh. requested um, previously right. to be able to do that. All right. Is, it, is that Vivian? Are you going to present? Yes, um, I'm going to drive and Rosa will start the presentation. Um, okay. And we have, I'll have all of the uh, application material, but we pulled, we culled some of the um, more important stuff so that it's a little bit first and foremost. Okay, thank you. All right, we're gonna sit back and grab our popcorn. <laughs> so, uh, hi folks, I'm Rosa, I, hi, we're Rosa. at the, um, we're at the corner of Sudbury and Stowe across from the library, just to orient you. Um, the house, uh, really, this is just a rotten garage that needed to be replaced and everything else is what happens when you have project creep. Um, so the house uh, was originally constructed around 1840 uh, as a wedding present to the Bigelows. Um, and it's historic, there it is um, at the turn Ooh. of the century. Um, it's historic importance, um, in addition to being an interesting example of sort of a bastardized Greek revival-ish thing, um, is that in 1851, it housed the first slave who was arrested under the Fugitive Slave Act, um, which was passed in 1850 in the run-up to the Civil War. Um, the woman who lived in the house, Ann Bigelow, was one of the founding members of the Women's Anti-Slavery Society in Concord. Um, and so really the house should be the Shadrach Minkins house, not the Bigelow house and or the Ann Bigelow, not the Francis Bigelow house, but we'll get to that at another at another date. Um, so what we are, we've been in the house 21 years now um, and have made a couple of changes to it. Um, what we're proposing to do here really boils down to four things. Uh, the first is adding the conservatory off the kitchen in place of the shed roof that we put on back in 08. Um, it will extend out a little bit farther. It'll be more true to the historic era of the house. And Vivian's putting up for you um, the southern facade, which faces towards Stowe Street. Uh, the original entry to the house, as you saw on that historic photograph from the library, was towards Stowe Street. It was a sideways house. Uh, Stowe Street didn't actually exist. The Bigelows owned what is now Stowe Street and all the way back to Hubbard. He was the town, um, well, one of the uh, Smithies in town. Um, so that shed roof that you see currently, we put in in 08. Um, this part of the house, what we what might call uh, in New England parlance, you know, big house, little house, back house, barn. So this was the cook house that was added um, over the years, it has had probably six different incarnations as it's been added, taken off, burnt down. I actually met the guy who lived here back in the 40s and 50s uh, by accident two weeks ago. And uh, he was in the house when that house, when that part burnt down back in the 50s. Um, so this part of the house has been reconfigured a number of times. So what we're proposing to add on is a conservatory, and I wrote far too much for you about conservatories at that point in time. If you bothered to read it, thank you. Um, you know, that was the era in which Lord and Burnham had just been founded and conservatories were becoming possible for middle class families, so lots of them were popping up. We don't see them very much anymore because most of them eventually fell down as well as popping up because 
there was so much glass. Lord and Burnham were primarily uh, metal, but the orangery uh, trend had already caught hold in New England uh, because it's sturdier and it can withstand uh, snows far better than the, uh, than the metal that was put up with the glass palace in London. So that's the conservatory edition, um, which you see. Um, and Vivian has detailed it in pa window panes that work with the rest of the historic windows. Um, the windows on this end of the house are of all different eras. They all try to mimic the true divided light in the original part of the house, some of them more successfully than others. Fortunately, when we replace, as a result of the conservatory going in and the redesigning of the upstairs, we have to replace those windows that are above that she's circling now. Those were actually put in after that fire in the 50s. Um, so what we replace them with will be more historically accurate than the windows that are currently there. Um, that's the short version of the conservatory. The garage is rotten. It's been rotten since we bought the house uh, 21 years ago. Um, and we have saved up for various projects and we're finally moving forward on the garage. Rot uh, is now it's an attached garage. Some reason believes that it should be over a garage. I don't know why, but that's his fantasy. And so that's where we've proposed to add this very small um, sort of a half step up on the garage level. Um, it's detailed as you can see on the east elevation so that the east elevation is frankly more respectful of our neighbors who we like very much uh, and are fine with this change. It's in keeping with the zoning regulations as well, which is why uh, Vivian detailed it the way that she did with the, that first roof pitch being small. And then the addition is, uh, pushed back a little farther. So it'll then be detailed below with a more appropriate um, garage door uh, than the 1970s version that's there now uh, with uh, proportions that will be more uh, in keeping with the kind of glazing that we see on the windows and that um, proportion uh, of the ideal rectangle or whatever that's called. Um, you know, it is an attached garage. Uh, you know, that's not on me. That happened back at the turn of the century when, or when they first got cars for this house. We don't have the records on when the garage part of the back house was added. Um, and there isn't space on the property for us to do a detached. Um, so sadly, that's a true carriage house isn't, isn't possible here. Um, but we do want to bring it into a more respectful shape. Um, so those are the first two parts, garage and conservatory. And those account for all the window redesigns, uh, but for a couple on the back side of the house. Uh, the third request in our proposal is the roof. So as you can see, um, moving from the existing south elevation to the proposed, basically getting rid of that flat roof, um, with the balustrade, which isn't historically appropriate. Um, that's been a source of uh, ice dams about every three years. Uh, so we've redone roofs and walls seven times. We've reflashed that. Um, it's, a, it's a real problem because it's a Southern facing corner. And uh, so we'd like to go to something that is both more historically appropriate, a pitch, um, and something that is more New England friendly. Uh, the other roof question for you is, uh, we'd really like to put solar on this, the southern facing side of um, the building. I know that solar is a difficult challenge in historic districts. Um, I like to think that this house has gone through so many versions of what kind of energy it has relied on. We still have anthracite in the basement. There's a huge pile of it that I have never bothered to take out. We also have oil tanks down there that we've never relied on. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, instant on demand. We've got gas, we've got pretty much, and there's still an old wood stove. So uh, it feels so appropriate that we would eventually add solar. We are very open to any form of solar. And I think we would probably be the first solar in the district. We're open to any form 
that you guys think would be most appropriate. There's a good looking, um, I should have photographed it for you, I apologize, but when you look across the bridge by Simon Willard Road, you can see, if you look very closely, there's a new solar array on Pam Callahan's old uh, garage that is practically hidden. And we propose to do one like that where it would not be panels that are jerry-rigged to maximize the number of panels. It would simply be one rectangle designed to be hidden right into a black roof. Uh, so as unobtrusive as possible. I did research the fake uh, slate tiles that Tesla is producing. Um, the wait list is between four and five years and they have no idea if they work in snowy conditions. So we've thrown that out. Um, but you so, get a free seat on the next ride to space if you buy it. Exactly. Oh my God, I love that idea. So, uh, so we'd really like to do solar. If we can't do solar, we'd like to replace the roof in metal. And again, I wrote far too much about what roof materials would have been on the house. We believe the house originally had a wood roof, which uh, is not particularly practical anymore in New England. Um, and then the second most likely material at that in that era in between 1840 and 1850 would have been uh, a metal roof. Uh, they were very popular, they were very practical. Um, and uh, you know, our house was built before the train came out so we wouldn't have been able to have slate. And uh, at that time, slate was still out of reach of a middle-class um, you know, uh, blue collar family. Um, and it's out of reach for this middle-class family too. Uh, so uh, the only other significant proposal in addition to the conservatory garage and roof is the changes in landscaping. Um, our kids are grown. We no longer need a softball pitch in the front of the house. Um, and our neighbors to the backside, uh, that property and Lang's old property has now been divided and soon, um, in addition to the beautiful work that uh, Sue Ann and Liam are doing on uh, the Brooks house behind us, or no, Ann's old house, um, there'll be a driveway um, bordering our back fence uh, to the north uh, because the, uh, the subdivision is a, a lamb chop shape. Uh, that means that we'll need a little more privacy back there. Uh, so we're proposing to put up a privacy fence, uh, same height as the current one, um, the current, uh, I forget what it's called, uh, and then adding some lattice to the top. Um, in our proposal, we've asked for it to be painted the same color as the house uh, so that it sort of disappears uh, into, and which will basically match tree trunks. Um, but if you feel uh, this is uh, what, Vivian's got up right now is the privacy fence on the right is what I'm talking about. If you feel that would be better instead of in the dark gray of the house, which is the Concord Academy color, um, uh, we're fine leaving it just natural wood and letting it uh, turn to silver, uh, uh, you know, whatever you think is most appropriate. But we would like to do that since soon uh, we'll have cars driving uh, basically through what is our backyard. The fence on the front of the house is uh, starting to rot. Uh, like the garage. Um, we'd like to replace that with something that's lower. Uh, we think that's more in keeping with the uh, most of the fences in the historic district. We did price doing uh, granite with the low uh, 30 inch uh, pickets, but the granite is as expensive as the house. So uh, sticking with the wood, painting it the same color as the house, which again will make it stand out a little less than a white picket fence. Uh, historically, the house has always had a white picket fence uh, to keep the animals in. Um, but given how much more development has happened in the neighborhood, um, it strikes us that uh, we could make it a little subtler by painting it the same color as the house. But if you want to go, if you want to instruct us to go with the historically accurate color, we're fine with that too. That's what we've got now. Um, and that, let's see. Uh, yeah, there are new additions in terms of the hardscape that we'd be doing. Um, it's almost all brick, uh, some granite detailing. Um, the raised beds that are currently a 
kitchen garden had to come out because again, they were rotting, but God, there's been a lot of rot here in 20 years. So they'd be moved to the side. So we'd have a slightly more formal entrance at the front, more in keeping again with the age of the house, uh, with a gate to match the current gates coming off of Stow Street, uh, which is appropriate again to the house because that was the original entry was to that side of, of the house too. Well, Stowe Street didn't exist back then, but that was where the front door was. So you'll be welcomed in, in the way that folks were, uh, you know, 170 years ago. Um, and then the brick will be the same brick that we've always used, which is old Boston. Uh, we'll probably reuse, most of the brick that we'll use will be reused from our current walkways. Um, the only other significant thing, and obviously you, you'll have questions, but is the color of the house. And we put this in the application. We had gotten approval seven or eight years ago, I believe now, for a different color. We put the first coat of paint on it on the house and it looked far too modern. So we went back to a color that we'd used in two prior houses in the historic district down on Main Street, the dark gray that is used repeatedly at Concord Academy. Layering that dark gray over the green that we had approved turned into what now looks like our uh, blue house. Uh, as part of this renovation, uh, we will repaint again. And uh, based on uh, some tests that we've done, the house will uh, come out the accurate historic color, which is that dark gray from uh, our old house at uh, 385 Main Street, which is the four square stucco uh, and uh, all the Concord Academy buildings that are the dark gray. And that is what we've got coming, all because of a rotten garage. That is a lot of rot, as you said. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Rosa. Uh, I, first of all, just want to, I want to applaud you and your team for such an incredibly thorough application. I, I mean, I, I don't think we've ever had a narrative that's had footnotes before. We may have, <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is, it's an amazing amount of information and research. And I just can't thank you enough because it's so considerate. It helps inform our discussions and our decisions. So thank you. I'm that. glad it's helpful. And we're, we're, I'm leaning on some terrific people in David and Vivian. Well, well done team. Um, I guess what, I, so we're definitely gonna wanna come out and have a site visit and just to do that piece of business uh, first, uh, so we meet every two weeks. Would a site visit on, tell me when that date is, Heather. I don't even remember. Are we in September, September 2nd. Would that be all right, Rosa, to meet at your house the morning of September September 2nd yeah. at 8? Okay, why don't no, we just... I'm sorry, say again the time. Uh, 8 a.m. Perfect. That's okay? Yep. All right, why don't we just put that on the calendar now because um, there's a lot to look at and I, I think we would all appreciate a a kind of on-site tour of the project. Um, so I don't, I think that was a very thorough presentation. I have no initial questions. So why don't I just see what the commissioners think? Um, and again, I think what we'll do is digest the information, have the site visit, and then the next time we meet, we may have questions or comments uh, beyond tonight. Does that make sense process-wise? It's fine with me, it's up to you guys. Okay. All right, so let me go around the horn here. Kate, no, what do you think? No Hello? Whoops. Kate, there you are. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, this might be more for Vivian Lowe, the architect, but I'm a little, one, the only thing really off the bat, um, especially since Rosa cited big house, little house, back house, barn, that concerns me is the um, two-story extrusion of the little house um, in the proposed drawings to create the space above the garage. Would you be rebuilding all the rafters? Uh, it has just been my long observation experience that that just extruding from an existing addition to a newer addition without doing at least some kind of half foot offset um, in time can be a little wonky to use a better word. I also think you don't, I, I, I think I would, uh, it would be a little more 
historically and architecturally accurate to to have an offset where that roof line addition is, you know, that have it be about six inches reduced. I, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it well, but that's the only thing that concerns me right now. So, so okay. just to reiterate. Um, Hi, Vivian. Um, sorry about that. If so, what you're asking is that we drop the the ridge of the addition down about yes. six inches. Yes. Is that right? Yes, yeah. I mean some number. I mean that you, which is I feel like more typically seen when one is adding on, particularly to a Greek revival house. Sure. Yeah, we could certainly look at doing that. It's a little bit more um, challenging to detail the rake um, and you know just the detail at the drop, but we could certainly do that. Okay, well, uh, it really is just a comment from Kate. It's a, yeah. it's a suggestion. Yeah. It's really up to you all. But thank you, Kate. That's a, a good observation. Uh, anything else, Kate? Oh, um, no, I'll be interested to see how the the new roofs work in, you know, um, for the conservatory mm -hmm. and the, uh, I can't remember what that area is where they're replacing the, you know, the one story bump out. But um, the, the library, library. Yeah, the library. kids' playroom. Yeah. Yes, but I also would like to echo Peter saying, you know, thank you for such a thorough application. It was actually very enjoyable to read and uh, learn about the house. But no, that's it for now. This is going to be a test later, Kate. So <laughs> study on. I'll be ready, Peter. Okay. Right. You always are. <laughs> thank you, uh, Dennis. I have no red flags that I can see. I have no comments at this point. Some maybe a little concerns, but not much. And I'm looking forward to the site visit. Uh, I think it's a, a, a great project. Okay, thank you, sir. Melinda. So I have no problems with this so far. I'm looking forward to seeing it as well. I am curious about with uh, the solar panels. I think this is something we're gonna be addressing frequently going forward. And so I am, curious as to how this will play out. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, Nia. Um, this is a wonderful house, inc incredible location. So it's a very special house. Um, I would love to know the address of the um, house that has the solar panels that were referred to. You know, it's one of our um, major concerns is, you know, solar panels visible from the public way. And certainly this would be very close to the public way. So that's a concern for me, but I'd love to see, you know, this example. Um, I think the site visit will be extremely helpful. I guess the only thing that is visually um, concerning me a little bit is the massing of that, that same piece that, that Kate brought up, that second story part of the garage. I, I don't love that straight shot long, long bit um, that isn't broken up. So this, to me, that massing just doesn't sit true. But I, again, I haven't seen the house and it's a whole different ball game when you see it in the flesh. So I'll look forward to it. There's a zillion other details that we'll, in, in the weeds that we'll get to next time. But I'm really looking forward to the site visit. Oh, may I just add something, Nina? Um, the house with the inset solar panels that Rosa was referring to is 52 Simon Willard. Thank you. And and actually, let me just uh, poke in there as well, Nia. On page three of the narrative, there's a nice summary from Brookline's HDC about their findings, which I actually think we should all read and remember because it, it really it gets into the which I appreciate the reminder about reversible uh, things and um, colors and uh, anyway, it's a it's a it's a nice summary of. Uh, no, I did I did read that. I'm okay. just you know I it's still reading it and seeing it are sure. two different things and and a solar panel has a different finish, a different texture than an asphalt roof, and an asphalt roof also fades, whereas I don't think the the solar panel is going to fade. So that's where, you know, we need to sort of work through that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Nia. Abby. 
Um, looking forward to the site visit. It's a architecturally and historically important house. Um, so we're going to take our time with it. I have lots of questions about little nitty gritty details, which we can deal with after the site visit. But my overall impression is that it's a it's a thoughtful application um, that really takes into consideration the guidelines and the appropriateness in the district. Um, so I'm looking forward to the visit. All right, thank you, Abby and uh, Luis. Um, I think this is a, this is a great uh, project and a, and a great uh, design. But I think that we have to keep in mind something very clearly that uh, as Rosa said before that uh, this house represented the big house, little house, barn, etc. Uh, this solution entirely removes uh, that identity and that ident identity is very important and it's very characteristics of our uh, New England houses as they evolve uh, through the centuries as this house has. So I think that uh, um, it's important that, that we keep that in mind and that uh, you know it would be an architectural tour de force, but it, it would be an accomplishment to maintain that uh, sense of organic growth that is represented by the big house, little house and attachment. And the other alternative is to recognize that what we're doing is just uh, converting uh, two parts of the organic growth into a single large unit and then just forego any other uh, hint that, that that may have been the case at some point, at which point the roof over the um, um, east part of the house, the, what we're seeing, uh, um, the what is described as the Sierra clapboard match existing exposure. I don't know how to describe it anymore. That that can that doesn't have to to be there. You know, <laughs> that that will be the edge of the garage, and uh, it's already a, a, a sort of a small structure that uh, uh, protrudes in the uh, east side of the house. So I think that those are all considerations, and, and of course, uh, the side business is, is going to really uh, crucial. It's a great proposal. All right, thank you, Luis. And I frankly don't have anything useful to add. I think the commissioners have said it all. <laughs> so I could say the same thing and, and reinforce. I think it's a, it's a very well considered design and um, the attempt to keep it in context is, is just, I can't tell you how much that's appreciated. So, um, so I don't think, I think the commissioners have all sort of had our initial reactions. So uh, Vivian, David, did you want to add anything or, or Rosa, any last comments before we go back out to the public for input? You're good for the moment. Well, I appreciate so much for having us represent. We look forward to meeting you in person. All right. And I have a question. Sure. Uh, if we do the site visit on the second, what will the next um, hearing be where we can start to hash through some of the details? We're just you know, working with a contractor and need to let them know what our timing looks like. It will be that evening. So okay. we, the site visit is that morning. We then, then you're first on the docket that evening at seven okay. o'clock. We go through the site visit and see if there are any questions, comments. Okay. Um, and in theory, we would get to a, a, a motion, but sometimes that doesn't happen the very first time. Uh, all right, so I think having heard from all the commissioners, why don't we go out uh, back to, sorry, I've lost my place in the agenda, uh, out to public comment. Is there any public comment on the proposed work at 19 Sudbury Road? I'm not gonna read that list again, if that's okay with everybody. I'm gonna look around. You see any hands, Heather? lost Heather too. Oh, there you are. All right, why don't we bring it back to the commission now where I think this is again just a continuance to a public hearing, but could I have a motion please? I move that we continue the application for 19 Sudbury Road to uh, our next meeting on September 2nd with an eight o'clock um, site visit scheduled for that morning. And a second. second. Please second. All right, let me just go around and get a vote. Kate. Kate, your eye, I think. Yes, you're muted though. Kate's an eye. Dennis. 
Aye. Melinda. Aye. Mia. Aye. Abby. Aye. Luis. Aye. And I'm an I as well. And I thank you again, team, for such a great, uh, Rosa, Vivian, David, for a great uh, applicant application and presentation. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the second. Um, thank you for all your volunteer time. You're very welcome. Thank you for such a, a good application. We really do appreciate it. All right. That, uh, that team is free to go enjoy the rest of their evening. So we're going, moving on to our last um, <clears throat> new public hearing tonight. This is 167 Monument Street in the Northbridge Monument Square District. <clears throat> Pardon me. Mary Ellen Walters is the applicant. This is a certificate of appropriateness to construct a one and a half story addition, a new patio and walkway, install fencing and replace a garage door. So we saw this uh, under additional other business a couple of weeks ago, and this now is the, the official application. So um, welcome, Mary Ellen. Are you going to present the project or Nancy, you're going to present? All right, welcome, um, Nancy. You're the architect, yes? Yes, yes, I am. All right. Uh, well, why don't we start with a presentation of the proposal if that we could I ask that and uh, yeah, Heather, so, if you could put that up or so are you going to drive Nancy? So. I'm, I'm going to uh, share my screen okay. and because uh, I put it in order I'm going to do like I'm going to talk and the I put the slides in order of that go with the talk okay All so right. hopefully this, this will work can you see my screen not no. yet Heather, do you do something? I just I just hit shared screen. Yep. So you should click share screen, and then whatever you want to share, you have to click on. Okay. On that um, pop up. I should show you a little miniature. Version. Okay. Can you see that? Not yet. Hmm. On the pop up. A white box should pop up and you have to choose specifically like the PDF that you want to share. If you click on something else and then go to the PDF, we won't be able to see it. Okay, let's see. Um, well, this isn't working. Okay, put uh, art so, on. Um, whiteboard? I don't know. I usually I just click on it. I'm sorry. Do you want to just share the thing I sent you? Or yeah. I, and I could just say next slide. Is that what you want to do? I yeah, can't I point to things though. You have to give me a moment to find it. Well, all right. So to walk me through it, I hit share screen and then because I can see it on my screen. It says files. Share screen on share. that on that window. You should be able to choose the PDF that you want to share. If you just it like on basic, go to basic. Basic. Is it, uh -huh. is it open on your desktop already? I see basic. I, it's and I. You have to have it open on your desktop already. Like open the PDF and then do screen share. I see. I see the PDF on my. Uh, I I my it's open on my on my thing. It's, it's, I see it on my screen. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe Heather, you'll just have to drive and. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm sorry, this is too bad. Um, I don't know why it's not doing it. I don't know why you guys can't see it. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know. It's the technology gods. They're obviously not satisfied for some reason. <laughs> Okay, so, um, okay, so I can't uh, control it, but Heather, I guess you're going to have to, this is the one I sent you? Yes. yes I, you're, okay, and can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to um, just
just talk and hopefully we can get this to work. Okay, so I'm starting out with photos. Um, Heather, you can just scroll slowly through the photos. These are the um, this these are pictures of the house. Uh, this is from the front. Um, keep scrolling. This is a picture of the public way right here uh, is where the addition is going to go. Um, this is the view from the neighbor next door. Uh, keep going. This is the south side. You can just keep scrolling. This is the back. Keep scrolling. And this is the view from the reformatory trail. You can see that the view of the addition is going to be obscured a little bit by trees. So keep going. You can keep going. Okay, you can, you can stop here for a little bit. Okay, um, so the Walters are proposing adding a one story attached accessory dwelling unit that will be 999 square feet. The unit will have a cathedral ceiling, so there will not be an attic or second story above. Zoning bylaw 4.222 allows ADUs that are under 1,000 square feet with a special permit. We will be applying for a special permit from the ZBA. The lot, as you can see in this, um, survey has 20,416 square feet, which meets the lot size required for zone B. You can go to the next slide. We are allowed to have a mass, max gross floor area of 5,074 square feet. The total proposed gross square footage of the existing house plus the proposed unit is 4,382 square feet. This is less than the max gross area allowed, allowed and in compliance. Keep going. Okay. The current living space, and so this is these are the existing uh, plans. You can just scroll through these that shows the existing plans and elevations of the exist. That's what's existing. Okay, you can stop on this slide. The current living space of the main house is 2,960 square feet. With the accessory dwelling unit, the living space will be 3,959. This is less than many other properties on Monument Street, which have 4,000 to 6,600 square feet of living area. And here you can see a list of some of the other space, uh, other houses nearby. You can go to the next one. The, the accessory dwelling unit, like the existing house, will be on sewer. There are currently two parking spots in the existing garage. One of the existing four surface parking spots will be allocated for the required ADU parking. So you can see to the lower right, the existing parking, one spot there will be um, for the ADU. Um, I'm sorry, is this blurry for you guys? I'm sorry, it's- Nope. It's not? Okay, good. Uh, the Walter's son, Doug, and his wife, Kelly, plan to occupy the accessory dwelling unit. The Walters have lived in their home for 20 years and would like to remain rather than downsizing. In the future, if Doug and Kelly need more space for a growing family, Eric and Mary Ellen will swap sides with them. The unit is meant to meet the needs of a small family and the future needs of Mary Ellen and Eric. The Walters do not feel the need for the unit to be 100% handicap accessible because their parents were made mobile into their 90s. The basement below the unit will be accessed from the main house. There will not be a stair within the unit connecting to the basement. The existing bulkhead will be removed and a and a stair will be installed instead, which will allow better access to the backyard from the existing basement. The new basement will have a ceiling that is six inches higher than the existing basement to better fit exercise equipment. The rest of the new basement space will be taken up by storage, a guest bedroom, and utility. The addition will be 25 by 37 with an eight by 18 six connector. You can go to the elevation, um, so scroll down. Yeah, okay, there you go. The distance to the peak at the front will be approximately 19 feet, eight inches, and at the back, 20 feet, three inches from grade. The first floor of the unit will be six inches above the existing first floor to fit two foot high windows at the basement, at the back basement exercise room. So if you scroll back, or no, go scroll forward actually, scroll forward, you can see uh, on that top, the west elevation, you can see the windows at the back of the addition. We appreciate the feedback we received from the HDC to look at the brown barns at the Orchard House and Old Vance for inspiration. Consequently, we have simplified our previous design. Can you scroll back one? 
Heather, thank you. We have simplified our previous design by changing the barn doors at the front of the addition to brown plank double barn doors, similar to the old manse entry. Changing the garage doors to brown plank garage doors, lowering the roof of the addition slightly and taking the transoms off the back elevation. In order to fit into the historic district, we are proposing an addition that will simulate the look of a New England connected farmstead, which consists of numerous farm buildings all connected into one continuous structure. As is typical of this genre, the addition will have a similar architectural style to the house. Per the HDC's requirements, we will differentiate the addition from the existing house. We will differentiate the addition from the existing house by setting it back from Monument Street and by facing it with vertical pine board and battens to match the garage instead of the main house clabbered siding. It will be subservient to the main house because it will be shorter. It will be in harmony with the main house because it will be stained the same color brown and the black Marvin wood windows with simulated divided lights, trim asphalt root sing roof shingles, granite front steps and a concrete foundation screened by plantings will all match existing materials. One light similar to the existing front light is proposed at each entry. The pitch of the roof will match the pitch of the main house. Um, can you go forward, Heather, to the, um, to the site plan? Yes, yeah, stop there. The location of the addition allows it to be set back from Monument Street and also the reformatory, reformatory trail. If the addition were directly behind the main house, it would be less visible from Monument Street, but it would be closer to the trail. The proposed siding aims to maintain a distance from both public ways simultaneously. Finally, the addition does not obstruct the visual integrity of the original 1941 structure. Can you scroll forward and just show the uh, window products? You can just kind of, you know, there's the door, um, these are the different window, the and um, the Marvin windows, simulated divided light. Stop, you can stop here. We are proposing black fiberglass sliding windows with simulated divided lights for the basement only. Fiberglass would be a better material than wood, so close to the ground. We are hoping you will accept this rather than wood windows because they will be partially obscured by perennials. The two back wood three-quarter light doors will be simulated divided lights, with simulated divided lights will be painted yellow to match the front door. Um, you can scroll to the next one, Heather. Oh, you, that's the door, you can keep going. Okay, that's right there. We are also asking for approval for an extension of the existing brick walk at the front and side and a rear brick 15 by 34 patio surrounded by a five by a four foot high lattice fence. The lattice would match the grid at the top of the existing six foot fence and be the same color. In this picture is a picture. Uh, the top picture is of the um, lattice that we're going to match. Um, you can, oh, and that's the existing light is on the right upper and the lower right is the proposed light. Um, Heather, you can scroll to the next one. Great, thank you, right there. We are proposing the following landscape features to embellish or, to embellish or screen the addition. And I wish I could point, but I, I can't. So uh, maintain the six to eight foot limelight hydrangea bushes along the south property line. Yes, thank you. Plant perpetua blueberry bushes that grow four to five feet high along the patio fence. Transplant existing inkberry bushes to the south side of the existing house. Yes. And plant uh, echinacea perennials at the front and south side of the addition. So you can scroll some more. These are the perennials and you can keep going. This is the, a blueberry bush. Okay. And so here we have uh, 3D renderings of the addition. You can see at the frontier, the addition is set back from the main um, 1941 original house. Keep scrolling. This is um, the view, the main view from the public way. 
This is a view from the next door neighbor. This is a view of the back. Unfortunately, I rendered um, the fencing. It should be a, a vertical uh, crisscross, not, not diagonal. So um, uh, sorry about that. That's one change I didn't get to fix. Keep going. And this is a, a view from the reformatory trail. Of course, there would be trees in the way. And this is a view from the parking. Um, and I would, be to, I would be happy to answer any questions and respond to any comments from the audience. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Um, hang on just a sec. I, I opened too many things on my screen. Uh, all right, well, why don't we go around and, uh, well, first of all, we're going to want to do a site visit, uh, I can say, uh, safely say. So are we, uh, are we okay to meet you all there in a couple weeks on September 2nd, was it, at 8.30 in the morning? Are the, I see Mary Ellen, I see you nodding. Nancy, are you available? Okay. Sure. So why don't we go ahead and schedule that? That's, uh, I think that's, uh, it goes without saying, we'll wanna walk around the site. So we'll, we'll set that for two weeks from today-ish. Uh, let me go around and see what folks' uh, reactions are. Uh, Kate, you have to go, because you, you have to go an MRI or something. I do, I know, I have to have that shoulder MRI. Uh, I appreciate the thorough presentation. Um, and it seems to be big house, little house, back house, barn night here um, at the HGC, because I know that's uh, part of the reference here for connected farm buildings in New England. Um, typically though, they all came to one side. They didn't necessarily flank the house, but um, my concern is not so much from the front because I can see that the addition is sufficiently um, recessed from both the house and the existing garage, but the south, I can't tell the south elevation and the rear elevation, I don't know which direction that is, the um, 999 square feet addition seems rather outsized to me um, and not subordinate to the existing house. And that is a concern. Okay. All right, thank you, Kate. And if we don't see you, good luck this evening. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Dennis. Um, I've read the letters that were sent by the neighbors, and frankly, I think they sum it up very, very well. I find this whole thing inappropriate, both in design and massing on the property. Um, I look forward to the site visit, but it's going to take a lot to change my mind on whether this is an appropriate project to move ahead at all. All right. Thank you, Dennis. Melinda. Yeah, I can't even begin to um, comment until I see this, and I hope it's all staked out so that we have a, a feeling of um, what it's going to look like. Um, so I look forward to that. Thank you, Melinda. Mia? Uh, I also look forward to the site visit. Um, as I said before, when this was under discussion basis, uh, despite the changes that have been made for this um, current uh, hearing, um, I echo Dennis's concern about the massing in from, um, and also Kate's uh, comments, the, the massing basically all the way around. Uh, so I will look forward to seeing it in real life and we'll go from there. Thank you, Nia. Abby. Um, so looking forward to the site visit, um, as Dennis mentioned, I would request that if it's possible just for simple stakes in the ground, so we can get a sense of the location and dimensions of both um, the addition and the patio um, and any other um, significant um, changes or expansions. Um, that's always helpful for, for us and any other members of the public that will attend to visualize. Um, we're not going to go in obviously much detailed review, but what I did want to do, I think that this would be helpful for, we have a lot of members of the public here tonight. I just wanted to excerpt some from our guidelines. Um, I find our guidelines are dense and I understand that and not everybody um, outside of members of the HDC read them as thoroughly as we do. 
Um, but it gives you a framework for how we make decisions about projects like this, which I think is helpful because a lot of times we'll throw around streetscape and massing and subservient and all this. And I think sometimes it can be helpful. So I'm just gonna read two short passages from our guidelines, which um, guide, guide, provide us guidance on what is and is not appropriate for an addition. So um, these are both found on page 19 of the guidelines if you're following along in your hymnals. Um, the, the existing streetscape and the scale and massing of the existing building should always be considered in the design of a new addition. The combined ma massing of the original building with the addition should be appropriate for the property size and spacing to adjacent structures. So essentially that, what that means is that we don't look at the size of the buildings throughout the district. We look at this property specifically, this lot, the size of the lot, the size of the existing structure on this lot and any adjacent structures. So while there might be bigger or smaller um, dwellings on other lots in the district, we're really focused on, on this lot and this size. And the second piece I think is also important. Applicants should keep in mind that Concord zoning bylaw includes height and dimensional limits, which may be greater than those that are appropriate to a site within the historic district. In those circumstances, the HDC may require that an addition conform to more restrictive height or dimensional requirements than those allowed by the zoning bylaw. Which is all to say that, you know, we understand the ADU bylaw and that with a variance, you can apply for up to, you know, a thousand square feet and, and so on. But in the district, we're going to look specifically at this property and we may make a determination that that size is just simply too big. Um, and that's my initial inclination on this is that the massing and the scale of this is simply not appropriate per our guidelines for this particular lot in this area of the district. So I have significant concerns. Um, I'm looking forward to the site visit. They're always very instructive. Um, they give us a good sense of proportion, the existing structure on the property, the adjacent structures. Um, and I think that will be really helpful. But um, to be frank, I have concerns about the massing and the scale as it's currently presented. So I hope that's helpful for people to get a bit of a framework as to how we make decisions on, on projects like this. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Luis. I want to echo every single comment that uh, Abby just made. I'm uh, also uh, quite concerned about uh, the massing. And uh, I would add that uh, the way that uh, this uh, new structure is proposed in the lot that does not correspond to any historical reference of uh, organic growth uh, in New England uh, houses. So I don't think that that uh, would be a point of reference that, that uh, will have uh, much validity. And other than that, I think that uh, we need to uh, see the, go to the site visit and, and assess the property uh, in, in, in the flesh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. All right, uh, did we, I think, uh... We heard from everybody. Uh, yes. Uh, Nia, did you have a question? Oh, I can't hear I'm you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to add one more comment to mm -hmm. what Abby said. Um, obviously, we realized from all the letters and the people who are in the audience that there's a tremendous amount of interest in this application and quite a few concerns that have been voiced. Um, but I just want to make clear that we, uh, we as a commission have absolutely no purview whatsoever on what is going on inside the inside a proposed building. It could be intended to house a swimming pool. It could be a ballroom. It could be, uh, you know, 10 families moving in. To us, it is absolutely none, not our concern whatsoever. We are strictly limited to what is uh, visible from the outside, from the public view. So we cannot comment on anything, nor can what's happening inside um, sway our opinion one way or the other. Thank all you. All right, well said. Um, all right, I really don't have anything else to add. I think we need to see it on the site and I think we've made our comments pretty clear so far. 
So why don't I open it up to public comment? Now, I guess I would ask folks in the audience, um, we've all read the public comment. We've had three, six, uh, several uh, letters submitted. Uh, we've read those. We've, uh, we certainly take them into consideration. Uh, I would say, uh, putting my town meeting hat on, if you have anything additional to say, or if you could please summarize your thoughts and, and try to keep it as brief as possible, we would appreciate that. So why don't we go ahead and open it up to public comment for the work proposed at 167 Monument Street. And I'm just gonna look for raised hands or, all right, Dave, Dave Garrett, you are first with your, with your mouse. So you get to go first. Okay. Welcome. Um, my name is Dave, David Garrett. Um, I live at 166 Monument Street, which is directly opposite um, 167 Monument Street. And I have filed an objection um, to this um, um, extension, um, along with many other of people in the uh, neighbors. I don't believe there's any um, comments that are in favor of it. The, um, I, to sum up, I see the problems with this on multiple angles. First of all, it's essentially turning this house into a duplex. And a duplex does not belong in the um, historic district. It um, runs now all the way back, all the way from setback to setback with this extension. It's totally massing, you use the term massing. Um, if this isn't massing, I don't know what is. So, it's inappropriate from that point of view. Echoing the comment about not talking about the inside, only talking about the outside. The, um, there's problems with parking. There is not enough parking to um, put a duplex on this property and have, uh, have this basically be a two family house. It will cause um, people to um, park on the street and they won't park on Monument Street. They'll instead park right opposite our house on Barclay Hill Road. Um, we've seen evidence of that in the past um, when this um, um, property has had visitors. The um, another problem with it is it breaks up open space. Um, the nice open space that exists at the moment between 155 and 167, that will be totally broken up. Um, I think that from the street, the, the way it's put together, I think quite frankly, it just looks ugly. Um, can't say any better than that. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't fit into the um, historic district and I urge you to reject it forthwith. All right, thank you, David, for the comment. Uh, are there other comments this evening? I'm looking around for raised hands. I see Martha, Martha Gray. Hi, Martha. Hello, Peter. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Didn't think I'd be back so quickly, but uh, here we are. Um, so we are the abutters to the south. And um, other than David, who just spoke across the street, I think our turn of the century bungalow is going to take the brunt of this barn. It will run 37 feet. Uh, along our driveway, you can't get any closer. And we have a one story bungalow. And just to talk about the FAR, I think our FAR could be more than 5,000 square feet, but, um, and some architects came to our house and wanted to put a second story, but it, it doesn't mean it's right just because you can do it. Um, this spans Monument Street, the whole length uh, from setback to setback. And I think it will, hurt the sidewalk. I think it will uh, be damaging from the, the public way and it will definitely um, <clears throat> hurt our house. We will look out our window and see a 37 foot barn. And on top of that, we'll look at their existing roof now, which has solar panels on it. So it is just too crowded. The sidewalks will be outside of the setwalk, the setback right along our, our driveway. Um, and I don't wanna be repetitive here. I don't think it is historically accurate. 
I think um, if you look at the presentation we just listened to at 19 Sudbury, you know, there's some thoughtful research about what a, a historic addition should be like on, on this home. Um, and I just don't see that research. And I think that's the missing puzzle piece. Um, if you look at the uh, east elevation of this house, I think the, I know it's a reproduction, I think it's a fine looking house. Um, unfortunately to the north, you have a 1950s or 60s garage. And to add a faux barn on the other side um, just exacerbates that the historic inaccuracies of, of the, the garage. Um, and it, it, that's the recipe to me for a McMansion, just this long, um, long drawn out house with a, a barn that's trying to look old, but it, it just misses the mark. Um, so we, we have written to you and are opposing this project. Um, yeah, we, we did want to request um, a lot of folks in the neighborhood uh, would like to see this scaffolded. Um, I think it's pretty easy to do with a builder, not just the stakes in the ground. They're very interested to see the massing of this structure, which is the main concern here. So I would like to request that that be done. And then some of the neighbors will not be able to see it on that day if they could leave it up for a couple of days and they could review the structure that way. Um, you have quite a few upset neighbors here. So um, I think that would be very, very helpful if that could be done. All right, thank you, Martha. Okay, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Commission. You're welcome. Uh, other comments? Okay, I'm just gonna continue to look around. Hey, I don't, do you see any other raised hands, Heather? I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Uh, hey, and just a sec, Nancy. Uh, Luis, yeah, go Nancy. ahead. No, no, no. I was pointing to Nancy. I, that oh. Nancy was uh, seems to have been raising her hand. Well, am I allowed to um, respond or? Uh, well, no? just hang on a sec. I just want to make sure there aren't any other okay. public comments, and then we will bring it back. Thank you. Just hang on just a sec. I think we've heard from everybody who wanted to raise their hand so far this evening. So go ahead, Nancy. We do have one hand raised now. Oh, gosh. Uh, all right. I don't. I can't make out that name, though. Is that uh, Sri? Yeah. Chiki? That Sorry. Yes. If, you, if you've spoken and you're a member of the public, could you turn off your video and mute yourselves. We've got so many people I'd like That's to a, see you Yes, talking. thank you. Thanks. All yeah, right. I'm, hi, I'm um, Sri Tupal. Hi, uh, Sri, right. welcome. I'm sorry, welcome. I didn't see yeah, you there. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, I'm at 20 Lang Street. Uh, we are the abutters, uh, you know, 167 uh, Monument Street property. You know, in over the you know, months on our, our, our other um, hearings, we have been consistent in saying that uh, we have no objection for a one story, uh, you know, single story attached, uh, you know, which is subservient in height and uh, to the main structure. So it, there, if we don't see it, that as an issue. And uh, as long as it's conforming, you know, uh, a conforming lot and, this, and the proposed, you know, which, which I, I believe that was the way it was presented. In addition, I think there's an important aspect I think uh, we want to bring, uh, you know, in the years we have been here, we have been here about two, close to seven years now. And uh, we have seen a lot of senior citizens moving away, uh, uh, you know, selling or because they cannot, uh, you know, age at home. And uh, so I think, th therefore, we are very sympathetic to this desire and uh, for people to want to age in place, especially with their family members. And so we hope the STC considers those type of uh, requests uh, in making their decisions. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm gonna just keep looking around for other comments. Any other raised hands, Heather? I'm trying to, there we go, we're all on one screen. Not seeing any at this time. Okay. All right, I just want to bring it back. Uh, Nancy, before I let you speak, um, oh, we've got Tim Rose has raised his hand. Actually, it's I, Nina Rose. I would like to know oh. how seriously you consider the parking, because if it were a public place, the mm -hmm. parking would be screened. And here you have parking 
adjacent to the street. And we have a lot of people here who don't use their garages and their driveways, frankly, look to me like parking lots. And I don't think that is nice either, especially in the historic district anywhere. Well, I guess I could answer that quickly and say that, again, that's not really in our particular okay. purview. That's, a that's what I wanted to know. It's a zoning issue, but I think we are concerned about the layout of the landscape, if that uh -huh. okay. makes any sense. In other words, we wouldn't want to see the whole front yeah. of, the, of the property paved. Right. That would, we would object to that kind of thing. So, uh -huh. so we have an opinion about it. It's mostly aesthetic, as long as the zoning is, is paid attention to. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, Nancy, before I, 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 I'll, I'll let you uh, go, um, I wanted to comment on the, uh, the 3D renderings. I think those aren't really helping the case because they're, they're, they're sort of, uh, there's something about them that is, um, it's not representational of what's there, especially the, mm -hmm. It makes the it makes whatever's being proposed look uh, very odd. The view the view height is off in a couple of them. It's higher than you know eye height, and oh. so I guess I would and they, and they're way out of context. There are no trees or anything. So I think I oh. would just recommend being careful with those as because I get the I get as an architect they they make sense to me as a massing diagram. Uh -huh. but they don't really set it in context if if, okay. if that makes sense yeah so go ahead i you were going to say something before um uh, i wanted to second the um the comment about um you know what is the appropriate way to have an adu in the historic district i think that it's i don't think it is Fair, I don't think it's fair to say you can have ADUs in just certain parts of Concord. So um, I think that um, finding a way to make it possible um, for anybody in a historic district is important. I guess I would. it would be nice to get a little bit more uh, feedback about um, the objections to massing, for example, if uh, it weren't a barn, if it was, um, if the mass was broken up, so it wasn't just one giant mass, but it was, um, or if it was slightly lower, um, that would be some feedback of regarding that would be good. The comment about the parking, um, we are providing what is legally required by zoning. Um, whether someone has to park on the street if they have a party, that doesn't seem like it's relevant. Um, there's certainly plenty of parking to meet what is required for um, the zoning requirements. Um, the, the comments about the, the, whether or not it is um, appropriate to have, um, I know there's been some comments about the only way to do the big house, little boat, back house barn was to have it grow from, from the front to the back. But there are many examples of um, uh, farms that where it grew sideways as well. Um, it, I feel like if it was going to be truly historic, it would have been the barn would be closer to the street. Pushing it back actually was um, trying to respond to some of the HDC's requirements about. Um, uh, being subservient to the, ex the existing original house. Um, oh, and the comment about scaffolding, I don't know if she means building wood. That seems, I mean, you can do things with balloons um, that might give the same, like this is how high it is kind of thing. I think scaffolding would be a bit um, ex extreme. And I will definitely take your comments about adding some, some uh, context to the 3D model. I'll definitely try to, try to do that to make it a little bit um, clearer about what's happening. So uh, comments that the mass is big, the mass is big. If we could get a little bit more direction regarding that, I think we could maybe 
meet your requirements better? Uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll speak on behalf of the commission. It's a little bit of a, 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 a shoaling water for us on that kind of thing because we actually can't make design recommendations as my colleague Luis would say, that's why God created architects. Um, mm -hmm. We can respond to, to additional ideas, but um, really all we can do is respond to what's presented and, and offer you know, kind of comments on, on this design. Um, so I know that's not entirely, in other words, we can't prescribe what can be done. Um, okay. And again, around the ADU issue, it's a little bit like the solar panel issue. We may have personal opinions about that, but as a commission, we're agnostic. It doesn't really matter to us, as Nia said. So I, I don't really even want to have that come up if it doesn't have to. I think, um, I think what we're, maybe the issue is that we're trying to summarize our, our comments that our instinctive reaction to the design is that it's, uh, it's just inappropriately scaled for the site. And again, I do want to reinforce what several commissioners have said is that it doesn't matter to us what's done anywhere else in Concord or the world. It's all about this site and this house and how appropriate is the uh, addition to this particular uh, house in context. Because we, as if you've attended our meetings for other properties, we go through this on every house we talk about in town, every property, in fact, and you'll see that we will often go through meeting after meeting, trying to refine a design and get it to, uh, to feel uh, appropriate for the, the context. So I, I'm talking too much, but that's uh, sort of my general, um, maybe I'm trying to summarize what we're getting at. So in other words, we can't prescribe, we can't tell you what to do, but um, we hope you can hear our concerns. And I do think that once we see it in context, it will help all of us get mm -hmm. a little bit better idea about what's going on here. And the scaffolding comment, Nancy, I think, um, I think Martha does raise a good point that the balloons have never quite worked because it's, sometimes it's too warm or too cold and the balloons blow in the wind and all. It's very difficult for us to get a sense of where the ridge line is. So, um, even if there's a way of, of creating a post that will at least tell us where the center of the ridge line is approximately, um, that would help as well as the staking out of the, of the corners. Um, as much detail and context as we can get. Um, because I think again, um, I mean, I have to do to have to say to the public, there isn't much we can do, this is private property. So whatever you can see from the street uh, unless you come to the site visit, people will just have to look from the street. We don't want people coming onto the, the homeowner's mm -hmm. property um, without permission. So the more context you can give to where this is, is proposed to sit, the better, even if it's staking up the four corners or, or what have you. But we do need to see where the ridge is, the center of the ridge is in, in relation to the house uh, and at least the, the outline of the, of the mass of the main addition. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. Nancy? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, let me just see if, uh, uh, hang on a sec, Martha, let me just see if other folks on the commission have additional thoughts, because we are gonna go see this in a couple of weeks. Are there thoughts from commissioners that I misspeak in any way, shape or form? Dennis, I see you unmuted nope. yourself. I Melinda, didn't, no, no, no. Melinda, you okay for the moment? Okay for the moment. Nia. Okay, Abby. Abby's in the child-free zone, so she's trying to stretch this meeting out as long yeah. as possible. Uh, Luis? I have no comments, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, Martha, why don't we go back to you real quick? It's a little out of order, but that's all right. Okay, um, the scaffolding uh, can be metal bars. Um, I was actually going to do it for uh, the garage. Um, Halsey Platt said that it's fairly easy to do so you get to see the whole structure. And it's, it's not wood and it's not the balloons or just one board in the air, it's, hmm. it's metal scaffolding. And he told me that it could have been, it could be done, it can be done very quickly. So I think a builder would know how to do it. Okay. 
Well, uh, so Nancy and, and, uh, I mean, and the uh, folks, that's, yeah, go ahead. I think it sounds pricey. Uh, we'll just have to see what we can do um, okay. that, that will give, give you the information you need. So, so Nancy, you understand the dilemma. If we don't get a good sense of it, we keep, we have to sort of keep going around, and we may. Have oh, to, I know. So that's yep. the that's the dilemma. Okay. Um, all right. I feel like we've heard, uh, we've gone out for public comment. We've come back to the commission. So I think we're ready for a motion. And really, this is just a continuance to the next uh, meeting. I move that we continue the application for one sixty seven Monument Street. Uh, to our next meeting on September 2nd with a site visit scheduled that morning uh, at 8.30 a.m. Second. Uh, all right, and I'm just go, we're gonna go around for a vote. Dennis? Aye. Uh, Melinda? Aye. Nia? Aye. Abby? Aye. Luis? Aye. And I'm an aye too. All right, so uh, Nancy and uh, Walters, is, thank you for the presentation and thank you uh, folks from the public for attending and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. All right, have a good evening. All right, moving right along. That's the last, well, there weren't any last minute applications, were there Heather? Surprise, <sighs> Hail Mary passes. All right, so we're done with our main business and on to other business. So why don't we, I uh, see folks from the library here. So I think that's our first uh, 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 other business item. This is 129 Main Street, the library. Uh, this is a discussion, an amendment to the certificate regarding the, uh, the yellowwood tree that, uh, that we lost in the storm and what the replacement is. So again, this is a certificate amendment so uh, we can have the, the, um, the library team present, the commission can talk about it, but this isn't a, there's no public comment on a certificate amendment. It's just really up to us to decide what we want to do. Does that make sense to the commission? All right, uh, Jeff, I see you here. It's nice to see you, Jeff. And a couple other I, folks from the library. Did you want to walk us through uh, the plan, yeah, Jeff? Um, unfortunately, Kim Ahern, our landscape architect, is out of town this week. But um, I'll walk through our thoughts about replacing our beloved yellowwood tree. And as, as Peter mentioned, and as most of you know, in the storm in early July, it... Um, a significant leader broke off, fell against the library building. The town was terrific in coming by to clean up that damage. And they determined that storm was on a Friday and they determined that the trunk had significantly rotted. And they were concerned that it was a risk because of how this quite large tree was overhanging towards the sidewalk. And they made the determination that the beloved yellow tree should be removed. So we've been working with Chris, to, uh, pardon me, with Kim to try to come up with an alternative. The yellowwood trees are apparently quite difficult to find, but she's been able through a fair amount of research to locate three yellowwood trees from a nursery in New Hampshire that will establish a similar canopy to what was there before. So this drawing shows the red circles where three yellowwood trees would be planted. We don't know, we could not find a record of when the previous tree was planted, but folks suggested it was quite old. So there was some speculation it might have been planted in the 30s when the library was renovated. We'd like to establish um, a similar canopy because it was really quite a beautiful view on that side of Main Street opposite Concord Academy of the library. So. Um, Heather, I, I don't know if you can scroll to the pictures of the trees as well. Yeah, just scroll down there. So these are two of the trees and I think scrolling down a little bit further is the third one. The caliper of these trees are about three to three and a half inches and planted in the way that Kim has laid out will establish a very similar type of canopy to what we had before. There are no other changes that are proposed and we're, we're in some ways sorry to be here because we really love that tree. 
um, and it looks kind of vacant on that side. So we're just trying to replant in kind. And um, we think this is a good approach. Yellowwood trees, by the way, are fairly slow growing apparently. So we think this canopy will look this way for a while. Can I All offer right. answers you, or feedback? All right, well, let me just go around to uh, see what folks think. Uh, Dennis, what do you think? Um, actually, I sit on a trustees committee, so I probably should not comment on this. Although I think it's great. <laughs> Okay, your comment will be ignored. <laughs> Melinda, what do you ignore think? Ignore it. Uh, looks fine to me. Uh, Nia. I think this is a home run. Well done. Uh, Abigail? Yeah, I think it's it's a solution to a problem we really didn't want to have, but we're stuck with. And I think this is um I think this is a, a really good um, effort on the library's part to to remedy what, what happened. All right, Luis. I think it's fine. Well, uh, I think that is, I have nothing useful to add. I also think it's fine. I think it's a nice <laughs> solution. So um, I think there, there really doesn't seem to be much of an objection to this. Uh, I do think, I'm not sure if this is, will this suffice Heather as a, as a submission for an amendment to the certificate or do the original drawings have to be resubmitted with changes and you're you're muted though. I think this is fine. Okay. I don't I don't think we need because no other changes are being proposed to the landscaping plan other than planting these three trees. So I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, eh, I so I think from our perspective, I think all we just need to do is uh, take happen to have a motion and take a vote. Um, Dennis, do you need to recuse yourself? I really should. Yes. Okay. Then uh, I think we've got one, two, we have uh, enough voting members. So could I get a motion from the commission, please? Okay, I move that we approve an amendment to the certificate for 129 Main Street um, to change the landscaping plan to now include three new yellowwood trees to replace the one that sadly met its demise. And a second, second, Abby. Okay, let me go around. Uh, Melinda, what do you say? I think it's fine. Uh, aye. Uh, Nia. Aye. Abby. Aye. Uh, Luis. Aye. And I'm an aye as well. All right, you are approved, Jeff and folks. Thank you for waiting until the bitter end here. We're still before nine o'clock. I will point that out. Mm. And we'll look forward to seeing those trees when they arrive. All right, terrific. Thanks, everyone. All right, thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, all right, and I think the last bit of uh, business are minutes. Now, uh, I once I scanned them, um, Mia or Luis, as our other officers, do you have any particularly strong um, uh, adjustments, amendments? I sent in two micro edits, typos, uh, but otherwise it's fine. I have no objections. <laughs> All right. Well, I think if, if folks are okay, I'd be willing, as always, to defer to my superior officers here in terms of the minutes <laughs> and look for a motion to accept them into the record. I make a motion that we approve the minutes from the June 3rd site visit, the July 1st site visit, the July 15th site visit, and the July 15th meeting. Second. Second. All right, uh, let's go around and see how you vote, Dennis. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Mia. Aye. Abby. Aye. Luis. Aye. And I'm an aye as well. All right, so we are approved. That is any other, is there, is there anything else on the agenda, Heather? Did anything sneak in? Nope. We need All to right. know when Abby is due. <laughs> uh, my my last meeting will be uh, the 16th, if I make it that far. I am okay. scheduled to deliver on the 23rd right now. Well, we okay. meet every two weeks, so you get like a couple Yeah, you'll be weeks. back in again in no time. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to so, miss yeah, anything. Yeah, I'll be back there, no problem. <laughs> you have like a whole, whole 10 days or something like that? Yeah, you know, no, no from the yeah. hospital room if I have to. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Oh my God, I can't believe it. All right, well, if you need help at the site visit on the second, like, you know, I don't know, a wheelchair. I, I was going to say, if someone wants to carry me to the site visit, I was going to say, I'll wheel you. you know, maybe, maybe we can find a babysitter. Maybe we can get you a babysitter. Exactly. After the 23rd. All right, any other thoughts or shall we adjourn? If you just want to see if there's any just public comment. Uh, good point. Is there any general public comment? Uh, Linda, by the way, thank you for attending. I see Linda, our select board representative is here. Thank you, Linda. Is there any last minute public comment in general? Um, don't see any raised hands and thank you for noting that, Heather. Uh, Linda, any words of wisdom from the select board? You do a terrific job. And I was thinking of all of you this morning for that site visit in that rain. Well, I, you know, only two of us showed up, I will say. Yeah, we, gonna, we have a fair weather committee. I'm going to be privately irritated <laughs> with other people. Right. I was there in the pouring <laughs> rain at okay. 8 o'clock. Okay. Some of it the other fun. members may have exercised their common sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. It was a very short site visit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, I think we've done our work for the this evening, folks. So I'd look for a motion to adjourn. So I have a motion that we adjourn the meeting. All right, all in favor, just raise your hands. Yeah. It's unanimous. Bye, everybody. All right, nice Bye. to see you all. Be well. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.